there I was, right? New Year's Day, scraped off all of my surfboard wax, about to put a brand new coat on there, and I find dings all over it, all over my surfboard. That meant I couldn't go riding. So I'm gonna show you guys how I fixed my surfboard dings in no time to be out in the water. Let's go. I went down to my local board shop and I picked up a ding repair kit. This one is by Big Swell. It's called the little sick little ding repair kit. Um, they do have two types. This is for a poly because it's blue. Well, not because it's blue, but the blue ones are for poly, poly boards, and the green ones are for epoxy boards. So if you guys do pick up this repair kit, make sure it's the blue one uh, if you are using it on a poly board. Epoxy boards, um, they run with the green one. So this kit comes with like everything you're gonna need. A sanding block, uh, measuring cuffs, doesn't have measurements, but yeah, hardener, comes with your resin, some stir sticks to mix the resin and hardener, some fiberglass, instructions, filler just in case you do need it, oh, and sanding paper. So that's pretty much everything you're gonna need to, to actually uh, work on your board and fix it. But I noticed that the sanding block is a bit small, kind of flimsy, so I picked up a firmer, wider brush, or um, a sanding block, and that'll help me out with those wider areas. I also picked up some extra sanding paper, 180 and 400 grit, to help me uh, polish it down to a cleaner looking uh, board, or repair. I also picked up some, well I didn't pick it up, but I did have some alcohol, rubbing alcohol, to clean the board of any excess wax or debris. Um, a lot of people use acetone, but you can use rubbing alcohol as well. And little foam brushes that I'm going to be using to spread the resin over the fiberglass cloth. Um, you don't need all this extra stuff, but uh, I do, do recommend it. So I forgot to mention, since a lot of this stuff is dangerous to work with, I recommend using safety goggles and a proper mask. I should have mentioned this earlier, but you're gonna need a knife to cut this out or a razor blade, whatever it is. But you're just gonna start cutting into the board, cutting around it, and then you're gonna lift out all of the fiberglass. I got my goggles. I started getting shards going into my eyelids. Okay, yeah. That's pretty much it. Just take this out. And now I'm going to sand this down uh, to kind of get these edges, uh, give the edges a nice bevel so that when I do add the filler, it'll just kind of bond to it real nicely. And for this, I'm gonna use 80 grit, which did come with the kit. So this is what I'm gonna use right here. Um, this is actually where the sanding block kind of comes in handy that they give you. Because since it is kind of a little bit on the softer side, it'll give you a nice little kind of bends to the uh, actual sanding process. Um, but first I'm gonna just do it without it and then I'll use it when I need it. Uh, I'm gonna use the resin first and then I'm gonna add this. Now, uh, I'm gonna just use about an ounce of this resin, uh, probably a bit too much pour some back in that's good I would say now that that's in there I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, this which is just like foam powder um, just gonna do about four consistency yep just one more big one yeah, that's gonna do it. That's gonna do it. Yep. Exactly what it should be. Right there. Yep. That's it. So, 
just gonna put a pinch more to make it good. I'm gonna get my catalyst here. They recommend eight drops for every ounce. So I'm gonna do eight drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then just mix that in there. Gonna have to work fast with it. And just mix it for a good minute. Okay, now I'm just gonna pour it in. I stir it for about 60 seconds. And it feels like it's already getting hard. So once I put this on here, it's gonna take about 24 hours to dry completely. Um, they recommend, some people recommend more, but I think 24 hours will be just enough for this to cure and harden. So be generous with it. You can always scrape more off and it's better to have more than not enough. So be, be overzealous with it. I'll give it four hours, I'll come back and I'll see how it's doing in four hours. It's been about four hours and the foam is pretty solid to the touch. Um, if I try to scratch it, it's on there pretty well. So I'm just gonna give it uh, a rest overnight and then tomorrow morning, just gonna sand it all off, put the fiberglass on it and boy should be ready to go. All right, so it's been about 24 hours now and what you wanna do for this next step is sand down all of this filler until it's sort of flush with the foam underneath. And for that, I'm gonna be using the 80 grit sandpaper. Uh, well, in a second. Uh, for now, I'm gonna use the wider sanding block to kind of do a, oh, that's a fail. <laughs> okay, do the wider sanding block to kind of get all of this sanded down flush with the board and then I'll start using the foam, uh, this little foam block. So here we go. Now, one thing I forgot to mention um, and do is put painter's tape all along the actual ding. So that, that way when you're sanding it, you're not gonna be sanding into the already uh, are the good surfboard materials. So I'm gonna go get some painter's tape. Now I'm gonna move over to, uh, I guess the 220 grit, which is this one. And if I can find a little block, I'm gonna start sanding down these edges. Well, uh, I guess I'll use the block. And just kind of press into the foam a little bit more to get right up, to get this, just this real nice edge to where I can lay down the fiberglass. So now I started I started to actually hit the stringer and that's what I wanted because then when I lay the layer of fiberglass it'll actually go into this uh, groove that's right here all along the actual cut and uh, that'll be flush with the actual fiberglass that's on the top and that way it'll just be nice and flush. Okay, so now the next step is to mask off where you're gonna be glassing. Right, so <laughs> my tape job was a bit crashed, so I had to redo it. Now I'm going to be mixing one ounce of this resin to uh, about 
eight drops of this hardener. Okay, so I'm just gonna do about an ounce uh, in this. That's what the instructions recommended. So, just gonna do about an ounce in there. That's good, you guys can see that. So I'm just gonna do eight drops now. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, looks like one got away, so I'm gonna do one more. Now you don't wanna be mixing it so fast to where you develop air bubbles. Um, trick is to go slow, and because this uh, stir stick is wood, it's quite porous, so it creates air bubbles. And air bubbles in a dune repair is not good, so just go slow, make sure there's no air bubbles, and uh, there it goes, it's working. Probably gonna pour some of this on there first, and then my first piece of fiberglass, and then the second and the third. So, oh yeah, I can see it's already creating air bubbles. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but you just wanna go slow. Just wanna go real slow. And then let it set for about a minute. So I'm just gonna let it sit for you know, about 30 more seconds. And then I'm gonna put my first piece of fiberglass on there. Wow, this is my first time doing this. And I read the instructions more than once. Uh, watched a lot of videos and I think I got this. So this should come out really well. Whew. Right, and I'm gonna be pouring some on here putting on my first piece and then just kind of lightly spreading it across the fiberglass so that it saturates the whole cloth. It's better if you get more of this resin hardener mixture onto the fiberglass, uh, fiberglass cloth because that way I've heard that um, the more you put on there the better it's going to be when you're sanding it because if you put less it won't exactly cure right and it'll just be a mess. So putting on more is always better. Okay, I think I'm good. I'm going to now pour some of this on there. Just a touch. I'm going to put my cloth on there like so. So after this, uh, once it's dry to the touch, doesn't have to be dry fully cured, but once it's dry to the touch, you'll add the next coat, which is known as the hot coat. And that is going to be pretty much the final coat that, uh, you know, is set on there and then you can sand it. Right, so while my board dries, I am going to fix this hole that is in my booty. So what you want to do first, or actually what I do normally, not normally because this is my first time doing this, but I'm just going to kind of cut around the frayed edges and once I get this all cleaned up I'm going to apply the glue that I bought for it it's called uh, contact cement it is for neoprene and you have to make sure you get neoprene specific glue because if you don't chances are it's not going to be a very good bond and it's just going to be a waste of money so what I'm gonna do first is kind of clean up these edges and just get it ready for uh, the glue. And this is gonna take a little bit, so bear with me. You don't wanna clean them up too much because um, I was reading somewhere and watching uh, multiple videos and they all said to just leave a little bit of material there so that you can sew it on okay so i got my brush 
and I got my booty. It's all cleaned up. Now I'm just going to open this cement. So if you guys hear a difference in my voice, I'm actually wearing a mask. Um, it's actually recommended that you use a mask for this type of stuff. What the directions say to do first is to apply a coat along the um, outer edge of the material. So that's what I'm doing right now. Don't have to put a whole lot, just enough to cover uh, the material. Um, and then they say to allow it to rest for about five minutes. So I'm just applying a layer right now. Might have put too much in there, but that's okay. Just open it up a bit and just kind of, you see that? Just kind of apply a little bit along outside edge, inside edge, and just make it good. Oh, a little bit too much there. And there it is. So I'm just gonna let that sit for about five minutes. All right, so it's been about five minutes and the glue is pretty, pretty dry to the touch. So now what I'm gonna do is apply a second layer, uh, which is what the directions say to do, to the actual uh, tear. And uh, they say to apply a little bit more on this one. Not too much, but you know, a liberal amount. Uh, just kind of dab it on there. So now what I'm gonna do is just pinch these seams together and making sure to get them real nice and tight. It's all nice and tight. Pinch together. And right now I'm gonna look at the other side in a couple of seconds, but that should be good. I don't think I have any problems with that anymore. Yeah, looks quite good actually. So once this dries in about nine minutes, they say to wait for 10, but in about nine minutes, I'm gonna actually, we'll just see how it is. Cause I don't know if I'll need to sew it together, but it looks good right now. And maybe in nine minutes, I'll sew the top edges of the backside uh, together. It's been about 10 minutes now. And after looking at the glue to see if it's dry, it's pretty dry. I mean, I'm pulling on it <clears throat> and it's not coming apart. And since this is so small of a tear, I don't think I'm gonna be needing to actually um, sew it together. If it was bigger, I think I would need to sew it together. But for right now, I think it's small enough to where just the glue will be enough. Um, I think I caught it early enough to where it didn't completely tear a bigger hole in the boot. So for right now, I think that's, uh, uh, I'll call that done. That's done, pretty much done. This is what it looks like on the outside. Uh, you can see the glue kind of came through on the other side and it's pretty good. I mean, I'm pulling on it and it's not coming apart. So like, you know, it's pretty solid. So I'm not going to need to stitch it or sew it together. So that's pretty much it. I'm calling that one good. Okay. Let's see. It's still a bit sticky. Um, I mean, it's dry to the touch. I think it will be okay if I put the next coat on. They say dry to the touch, meaning, you know, not coming up on your fingers. It's sticky, which I think that is the right time to actually add the second uh, coat, which is, quote, uh, the hot coat. Okay, so I got my cup. Yeah, that tape job earlier was just trash. I'm just going to use about, mm, I would say, yeah, about half, half an ounce of uh, resin to hardener. So here we go. Yeah, I'd call that half an ounce. I'm going to do about six drops of hardener. Uh, this will be enough for the one, two, three, four, five, six. And now I'm just gonna begin to mix it slowly. I don't want it to get any air bubbles in it. 
since this is the final coat, I want to make sure I do it properly and not have any problems. I'm going to go ahead and start uh, applying this uh, mixture now to the board. Just wetting my brush before I do any type of work. And uh, just going to plop it on there like that. And I'm just going to squeegee it along, making sure to get it around real nicely. Get it all on there. Get it all on there. And just spreading it all around, making sure I get it real soft. <laughs> Alright, that's it. I'm going to let it dry for now. Um, we'll come back in 24 hours, it'll be hardened and cured, and we'll sand it all off, um, and give it a nice polish, and should be done. Alright, so there it is. It's all hard, and the resin has cured nicely. The fiberglass is in there real nicely. I don't see any air bubbles. Uh, the last step is to sand it all off and get it down flush to the board. I'm going to be using a 120 grit for this right now. Depending on how it goes, I'm just going to sand it all off till it's flush with the board and we'll look at the finished product. So let's get into it. I'm going to be increasing the number of my sanding paper to get that really fine smooth look. Okay, so I'm going to be using a Scratch Doctor by New Finish. I'm just going to apply a little coat on this just to get the small scratches out. Oh my god, I cannot believe how well this thing came out. I mean, this thing is rocking. It's like a brand new board. Hard as rock. It came out really well. And for this being my first time, I think I did really good. Sure, there are some, you know, imperfections here and there, but I really think this came out really well. Like, no joke, for it being my first time. And shoot. I can be more happier. I'm ready. This thing's ready for the water. And it took me a minute, but I am happy that I did it myself. Cause now if I have a ding, I can fix it myself. I don't have to rely on anybody else to do it. And you can too. All you have to do is get one of those kits. If you want the kit for yourself, I will link it down in the description uh, of this video and you guys can purchase it uh, for yourself. So. Yeah, I hope you guys like this video. If you stayed this long in the video, thank you so much for your support. And I hope you guys keep rocking on this 2021 year. I know last year was a bit eh, not so good, but this year's gonna be way better. It's gonna be different. It's gonna be the best year for everyone. I am like positive. So, you, I hope you guys have a good year and best wishes for everybody. Let's get these waves, boys and girls, because you know what? Those waves are always out there, and I'm ready to go. Let's go. Hew!